Hello and thanks for joining us for another episode of Mid-American Gardener. We've got a special show today and we've got three very knowledgeable panelists here to answer your questions and show you some things from their yards. Before we get started though, let's have them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about where you can find them. So Chuck, we'll start with you. Okay, I'm Chuck Voigt. Um, long time retired from the Department of Crop Sciences at the University of Illinois. Uh, herbs and, and vegetables were my specialties there, but as an undergraduate, I did the whole gambit, so we can we can cover the, Just the whole everything. horticulture. If you, yeah. Okay, awesome. Marty? Hi, I'm Marty Alanya, and I, I actually think I am retired now. Um, uh, I was a landscaper for a long time, and I still have it all up here, but my knees disagree <laughs> violently, so yeah. Okay, all right, and Jim. <laughs> I'm Jim Appleby with the uh, Illinois Natural History Survey, retired entomologist. So I deal with the insects and mites attacking trees, shrubs, and flowers. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's jump in and get started. Uh, we've got some pictures here that Chuck sent in, and we'll get to those. While I'm pulling those up, tell us a little bit about what we're going to see. Okay. And... Well, the last time I was on with Marty, we were talking about four o'clocks, and this year I had a really good really good success with them. Mm -hmm. uh, these were grown from seed. Um, you get a package of seed and it's 35 or 40 seeds and that's plenty for most people. Almost every one of them germinates. Um, they're interesting because the flowers come out about four or five o'clock in the evening. They're open through the night so they're pollinated by night flyers uh, like moths and some of those mm -hmm. things. Um, Phil just had a, a, a new book on, on, on moths and, and so we really enjoyed them. This is about 10 o'clock in the morning, which I would say usually they're, 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 they're closed up by then, but the morning we were taking these pictures, they, they, they stayed quite nice. And um, <coughs> color array, kind of pinks, yellows, almost whites. Occasionally there's one that's got striped flowers. There's one, I don't think you can see it very well in that picture, but it's red and yellow striped. But they do very well. And as soon as it frosts, you know, they're done. Yeah. Um, but as I found out a few years ago, they were selling the, the roots mm -hmm. at, at the Chicago Flower Show. And of course, at the Chicago Flower Show, they were extremely expensive. Of course. And it was just a little, a little bag of these yeah. dried up looking roots. <laughs> and so I said, well, that doesn't look very promising. But this year, just because... I had a little time yesterday. Mm -hmm. I went out to to see what what I could see, and doggone it, they are pretty. They look like little Hot little dog. Yeah, you know, kind of like a a little dahlia, although I don't think they're as as uh, reliable. No, <laughs> I'm talking about dahlia is is a much more luscious, uh, yeah. oh, wet okay. wet yeah. root. This one I think has more tensile strength. Gotcha. But it remains to be seen uh, how to, I have no idea, I may have to look it up and see if somebody has it posted somewhere, but. Um, so you started those as seed? They were seeds. Mm -hmm. You can see a little wow. bit of the, of the seed, of the, of the uh, mm -hmm. medium still clinging there. Uh, it was just a potting soil. I have so many questions about these. So, so you're going to overwinter those? I'm going to try. try them again. I'm yeah. going to try. Give it a shot yeah. and see what you get. So and since these close up during the day, hmm. what light do you grow them in? Well, they're, they're best in full sun. Interesting. They, they, would, they, they, would probably, <laughs> yeah. they would probably survive with a little sh you know, shade, but basically they're out, out in the full glory of the sunshine. Interesting. And it's interesting because they're really easy to start from seed. So I'm yeah. not sure digging them and hauling them around, saving them somewhere warm and bringing them back out. But of course, being a gardener, I got to try you it. You got to see. I got to try it. You just well, yeah. got to see yeah. if it'll plus, work. Plus, these are free and not like $9 a, a dried up root like they go. were at the, <laughs> at the flower show. So, so how yeah. will you store these? Good question. I... I have a feeling that once they get dried out, mm -hmm. I, I may want to put something like potting soil or something dryish poly soil around them, oh, just okay. so that they don't completely, completely get desiccated mm -hmm. like the ones that they were selling in March at the at the flower show. So you won't water them, but you oh, would no. just put something on them to keep them sort well, of. Yeah, moist? I, I think uh, basically it's like t keeping a dahlia, although dahlias mm -hmm. are usually pretty pretty tough, and you can just kind of put those in a 
in a quiet sec session mm -hmm. of, the, of the basement and mm -hmm. they'll they'll do okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll see how these do. All right, we'll see. We'll, we'll report in the Bring in the them spring. back in the spring and we'll see what kind of shape they're in. <laughs> All right, Marty, we're going to go to you. Okay. We've got a couple questions. Um, we were talking about this a lot before the show. Margie Brewer sent in a picture and wants to know what help we can offer about the deer rubbing on her trees. And she sent this picture in. Um, pretty pretty extensive damage there. Yes, so, it is. Um, what are your thoughts on deer prevention? Uh, wow. Do you like venison at all? Cause, <laughs> Eat more well, deer? Yeah. Is that the answer? There's plenty of them out there. I'm looking, who, oh. who among us thinks they know what kind of tree that is? Because it looks a little bit like apple maybe, which maybe. wouldn't surprise me. Um, I thought magnolia when I first saw it, but that's not necessarily true. Yeah. It could be right. It could be an apple. The side went to do, but um, yeah, magnolia, I hadn't thought of that either. Um, there are sprays um, that you can, that are deer preventive because they just smell bad. They're made of rotten eggs <laughs> and they really stink, <laughs> but, but you have to reapply them every time it rains. Um, if it's feasible, uh, the gym to my left here knows all about deer, deer guarding and prevention. Uh, if it's feasible, you can encircle the, the entire plant with some fencing that have to be four feet high anyway and close enough that they can't jump in. So mm -hmm. they, they just ignore, they don't just go back past it. Or you could uh, wrap the individual branches or trunks with wire. You can do that too. So, like hardware cloth? Yeah, but I'm thinking they'll probably still rub on it, but at least they'll only rub on the wire and not damage your trees because they are amazingly strong and can do a You lot know, of a few weeks ago when you came in with that tree wrap, mm -hmm. that would not work in this instance, would it? I don't think it'd be sturdy enough. I think because it's designed to expand with the tree, you know, as it grows. I mean, you oh. could fit it around that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it would protect the, the bark enough because gotcha. if, if a buck wanted to rub on there, I think the plastic would just shift around. Gotcha. Okay. So. And is there any um, saving this, repairing this? No. That's, that's no. Okay. Um, it's, it's not all the way around the tree trunk itself, so it's not girdled completely. So there's three quarters or two thirds of the cambium is still working to keep the top of that tree alive. If I were you, I, I actually would recommend calling an arborist in and ask them what they think. See if they want to trim it up at all or something like that. Um, there's, I'm, it looks to me to be salvageable, but okay. ask, ask an, a tree expert, really. Okay. All right. Jim, we are to you. And tis the season almost. <laughs> so we are going to be talking about hollies. Now, you're going to break this up into two. We're going to do photos this round, and then he's got some actual live specimens, too. So uh, talk us through your, your pictures here. Well, Tanisha, a, a couple of months ago, I had a call from a couple that last year, in I think they said September, when they purchased some three holly bushes loaded with just huge amounts of berries on the bushes. They planted the trees, I mean the bushes, last year in September. They did extremely well this year. A lot of new growth, beautiful foliage and everything. But they called me because they said, not a single red berry on, on any of the three, not a one. So the question was, what did they do wrong? I said, well, you didn't do anything wrong because if they did well where you put them, place they put in the, you know, mm -hmm. the soil there, it must be perfect because it had all this new growth this year. So I said, what you did wrong is that you did not have a male plant nearby. So people, you got to remember when you have hollies, you got to buy two plants. You got at least two plants. You got to have a male and you have to have a female. And the male will pollinate the female flowers so that you have berries the next year. So this couple went out and they, they bought a male plant. Mm -hmm. So this coming year, they'll probably have some berries in. Okay. All right. So this will tell us how to know the difference, right? In yeah, your in your so photos. I, I have I grow hollies, and I thought, well, it might be nice to show people 
how you can tell the sexes of the <coughs> plant just by looking at the flowers. Okay. Both the male mm -hmm. plant as well as the female plant will produce flowers. So, but you know, they're different. Okay. So here we see uh, the one that is a male flower. And when you look at the male flower, you notice those four yellowish objects. Those are the stamens. And at the end of the stamens, it's called the anther at the very end. And you can see they're sort of yellowish, and that's the pollen that the male flowers produce. And then look at the center of that flower. Notice you see the four petals, but at the center, it's hollow. It's a depression there. So that's always the characteristic of the male flower. It has that center that has nothing. It's just a depression. And then they got the four stamens. Okay. So let's go to the next one. This is a side view of the male flower, too. You can see this one. It shows very nicely the four stamens with the yellow pollen mm -hmm. at the ends. Next slide. Now this is the female flower, and you can see in the center, it's not hollow, it's not depressed, it's got that object right in the center, and then that one to the uh, right-hand side of the uh, screen, you mm -hmm. can see that extension out of the center. So that's how you can tell the male and the female flower. And then you notice it still has those four sort of stamen-like objects. And then, you know, that's true with, you know, many plants, I mean, I mean many plants have the rudimentary male organs. I mean, just like we humans, mm -hmm. males have have the nipples and yeah, they're not functional no in the male human being. <laughs> so the same way with the flowers, they have sort of rudimentary stamens here. And you can see those four stamens, but there's no pollen on that. But the center mm -hmm. of the flower is the uh, called the style. And uh, that's where pollination takes place. So let's go to the next one. Here's another good photograph of the hollies and see the center part there that's full and then you see the four vestigial stamens mm -hmm. and uh, so you can tell right away whether you have a male or female by just looking at the flowers. Now the flowers in the hollies will be produced, they'll start producing flowers in late April and you'll see them flower through the month of May. And here's a, now this is the female, notice how different it is. You see the four vestigial in other words, non-operating stamens and the four petals. But look at the center. That's got the big style mm -hmm. that it's called. Mm -hmm. And at the uh, end there, it's very enlarged. So when the insects like wasps and bees visit the male mm -hmm. flower, they get, they get all covered with pollen. And mm -hmm. then they visit the female and the pollen rubs off on the female part. And then you have fertilization. And then you have the very far. This shows a whole bunch of female, female flowers. flowers. You can see the centers are full. Mm -hmm. So that's the female flower. Well, theoretically, that's how thick the berries can be yes. as they get pollinated. Now let's exactly. talk a little bit about the varieties. I have several varieties of holly. This is the American holly, and notice this is the one that we usually think about traditional, but the American holly does not do very well in the Midwest. I think it's our winners. If you go to Washington, D.C., around the federal buildings, they've got some beautiful hollies there. Big, tall hollies, maybe uh, maybe 20 feet, 30 feet in tall, wow. American hollies. They do well in that area and further south, too, in the Carolinas. But here in the Midwest, they just don't do very well. And uh, this next slide shows you uh, a slide that the reason why they don't do so well. Mm. Let's mm. go. It's, it's subject to uh, an insect called the holly leaf miner. And uh, this little fly in the maggot stage mines the leaves of holly. This is American holly. So American holly is, does not do so well because it's also susceptible to holly leaf miner. Now you can use some insecticides to get rid of that, but as an entomologist, I was pleased when my holly bushes became infested because I could study the holly leaf miner. <laughs> it became a little laboratory, but, didn't know, it? Yeah, right. But, you know, <laughs> only most, you, Jim, only you. <laughs> most, people would not, most people would not like to use these kind of leaves yeah. in their decorations. <laughs> Next one is a, uh, this is one that I really like. Mm -hmm. It's in the Meserve hollies. These are bushes now. These are not trees. These are bushes. My bushes, without any pruning at all, probably get the height of maybe five or six feet if you don't prune them. 
but I really love this uh, holly. This is in the Meserve hollies. There's several different varieties of Meserve holly, but this is called Blue Princess. This is the female plant with the berries and Blue Princess. This is called uh, China Girl. This is another Meserve holly, and it has the red berries. The leaves are much smaller. Now, with the Meserve hollies, the nice thing about them, they're resistant to holly leaf miner. So let's show the next one. Mm -hmm. This is the ma this is the blue princess male, and you can see no berries, but uh, it has you know if you just want to have nice holly foliage, just raise a male plant. Mm -hmm. Just raise a male plant. Very yep. nice. Okay, and you know what? Now I feel like I can walk in and and pick the right one, and I can get my little magnifying glass out and know a female from a male. And <laughs> even when they're mislabeled, which they even when they're are. mislabeled, you I'll know. know. We'll all know. Doing. Okay, we're going to take a pause right here, and we're going to go check in with our friend Liz, and tell us, she's going to tell us how you can become a friend to this show. And thank you, Tanisha. I am so excited to be joining you here in the studio for this very special Mid-American Gardener as we wrap up the end of the year here at Illinois Public Media, which means we are coming to you and asking for your support so that next year can be just as strong and even better, bringing you the shows that you love, like Mid-American Gardener, a gem of Illinois Public Media, well over 30 years of bringing you the gardening advice that you want, answering your phone calls, and now meeting you in the spaces that you are in social media and on the app and making sure that you are getting your trusted expert advice to keep your hobby strong, keep your passion strong, and that's what public media is all about, lifelong learning. And your support for Mid-American Gardener and all that we do here at Illinois Public Media is so appreciated, especially as we wrap up this calendar year. So please give us a call, 217-244-9455, or you can go online at willgive.org. Support everything that Tanisha and these expert panelists bring you each and every week with Mid-American Gardener. And speaking of that, let's check in with Steve, who's going to learn some things from Tanisha. Thank you so much, Liz and Steve. Welcome to the to the Mag Set. Thanks for having me. I always enjoy coming because I always learn something new. Yes, and you know what? Now that you're a homeowner, you I see you're talking more more, more about landscaping and yards oh, and all that kind of it's stuff. So always a work in progress. We is what brought I've you learned. over. <laughs> yes. You and I. So on the show, not only do we talk about gardening, we talk about crafting, decorating, all kinds of things. So you and I, a little bit later, Ooh. are going to put together a porch pot. I'm very excited. It's going to test us both because normally. I am the student, but in this instance, oh boy. I'm going to be the teacher. Do you get so. graded on teaching, too? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just me. I get It's just okay, you. That's fine. It's just that's you. Fine. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here, and we're excited to have you here, too, and you can continue to support Mid-American Garner at 217-244-9455. Continue to support it so you can make fun of me while I make a porch pot later. Yes. And, you know, this is just one of the wonderful things we do. Now, had I known you were coming, I may have invited Kelly to bring, uh, I don't know, a hissing cockroach. See, the bugs um, don't bother me. They don't? No, not oh, really. Oh, man. Okay. Well, ne I'm not gonna for eat next one, time. Though. I'm not going to eat one. No? No. No. Okay. Just one of the fun things that we do here on the show. But, yes, on our next segment, when we come back to us, I'm going to have you put this together. Jim brought in some holly, and this Great. thing is just going to look fantastic on our porch for the holiday season. I'm excited. My mom makes these things all the time, too, so I'm sure she'll be uh, very excited that I get to make one now. Yeah. So you can continue to support Mid-American Gardener and everything that we do here along crafting uh, at 217-244-9455, online at willgive.org. Uh, being a friend of Mid-American Gardener supports everything that Tanisha does, all the expert panelists that come on every week, not just talking about gardening, but talking about crafting and gardening and putting in holly in pots and making great holiday yeah. gifts for all of those. So if, if the end of the year is a time where you like to celebrate around, be, around being family, maybe making one of these is something that you can do together. It's 217-244-9455. And uh, if you do become a friend of WILL today, you can support us and be and get a gift. You can get a gift, um, a cup, a mug at $8 a month. Mm -hmm or a book at uh, $10 a month, or the combo at $15 a month. I always like the combo deals. And this is really cool, too, because native plants are a huge buzzword right now. Everybody yes. wants to put natives yes. in their yard, in their spaces. And so this is a really great resource to have if you are trying to build that native uh, sort of pollinator pocket in your in your landscape. So. I really need to get that because people keep telling me about it. It's 217-244-9455 online at willgive.org. And thank you. With your ongoing monthly gift of $7 or one-time gift of $84, we'll say thank you by sending you our special Mid-American Gardener mug, perfect for drinking coffee in the morning while you plan your day gardening. 
With your ongoing monthly gift of $10 or one-time gift of $120, you can select the Midwest Native Plant Primer, 225 plants for an earth-friendly garden by Alan Branhagen. This source book includes 225 recommended native ferns, grasses, wildflowers, perennials, vines, shrubs, and trees. It's everything you need to know to create a beautiful and beneficial Midwest garden. With your ongoing monthly gift of $15 or one-time gift of $180, you can select the mug and the Midwest plant primer, the perfect combination to help jumpstart you and your garden this spring. All right, so some great gifts. Yeah. Now it's time to get crafting. All right, here All right, we go. Let's do it. Make your mom proud. I'm going to try. So, you know what? We're just going to put this guy here, and we're going to Bob Ross it. There's no rules, right? No just mistakes. Just happy problems. Just happy accidents. Happy accidents. That's so, what it is. So, grab a few things, All right. and uh, let's just make her pretty. All right. Marty can grade us afterwards, because... I'm glad somebody is, because I have a feeling it would just, just be... We're just going to pop this stuff in here, and we're making a porch pot. So, why, why would you make these with the, like, fake flowers and everything else, along with the real stuff. Well, you know what? Poinsettias are kind of fickle creatures, and so we don't want them out on the porch during okay. this this time of the year. And away so from cats, this right? is easy. Yes, look okay. at you, you hey, do I know, I know a little things. So we're just gonna put these in here, make that look nice, see how it's filling in. Actually, Steve, we're not doing too bad. Hey, I got some crafting, I guess, somewhere along there the lines. There we go, this is gonna look lovely. And this pot, uh, this is, just a little pot that I picked up somewhere, and I had my kids um, put paint on their hands and put their handprints on. So you could do oh, something like nice. that, too, to make it special. And I got all of these little foo-foo things at a certain store where everything was a dollar, but it's now $1.25. <laughs> I'm not I, trying I, to name drop the store, but... I pick up what you're putting down. Yeah. So what, what did we put in here that was real? Um, just the holly, the and holly. I'm not and sure the what kind, because Jim's going to have to tell us about that. Jim, which one is this one with the little pine cones on it? This is hemlock, okay. Ooh. So we'll find a spot for this guy in the back because it's really big and pretty. Look at that, even when it's frumpy, it, it looks, looks nice. I it think we great. did a good job, Steve. And we even have extra for maybe another one. Yeah, we do, okay, wonderful. So this is a great gift idea, along with the other gifts yes, that we just saw. Yes, and you can do that at 217-244-9455, online at willgive.org. Not only do you learn about everything gardening, you learn about crafting with that, some of the stuff that you did garden. It's 217-244-9455, mm -hmm. online at willgive.org. Uh, and being a friend of WILL is super, super easy, and you learn great stuff from Tanisha and the panel experts here. It's 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. Thank you, Tanisha and Steve. Great job, by the way. The pot really turned out lovely. And that is a really great gift idea. Something that you can even do with the kids, as Tanisha said, makes it really special and homemade. But those premium gifts are great as well, as Tanisha mentioned, for that gardener in your life. The fan of Mid-American Gardener, perhaps, perhaps yourself, because I believe in treating yourself around the holidays. But the best gift of all, if you're just really struggling with someone on your Christmas list or your holiday list or whatever holiday it is that you celebrate, perhaps a gift of membership. Maybe this aligns with their values and they would like to invest in something in their community that connects us all. A gift of membership is wonderful. You can gift that to someone else at 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. And the gifts don't stop there because with that membership, they also get Passport, which unlocks so many more things that you can stream. Um, of course, you can always stream in American Garden on the PBS app for free, but there's a lot there that you can start binging as a part of your membership and your investment in Illinois public media. It is about time to get back to Tanisha. She has joined the rest of the panelists back on the Mid-American Gardener set, and I hope that you stay for the rest of this episode. But first, give us a call with your support before the end of the year, 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. Back to you, Tanisha. All right, and we are back, and Chuck, I think we're back to you. Okay, well... <clears throat> Last week, I got a sort of a cryptic email from my friend Sal Gaberti, who's a, a, an herb grower in Connecticut. Okay. I met him early 90s in International Herb Association. So we've stayed in touch over the years. He's come out and done programs for me here at, at some of our meetings. He said, I'm going to send you a package and it's going to make you smile. Well, regular viewers might remember how obsessed I was with black walnuts a couple of years ago. <laughs> well... Sal has chickens, and they have a, an honor system egg table out in front of their mm -hmm. place. 
and people bring back cartons. And he sent me six or eight of these, which are from Black Walnut Farm, which... <laughs> If you know Chuck, yeah, very good. yeah, and very nice. and in the same package, he sent me his new book uh, on microgreens, which have been hot now for I don't know mm -hmm. ten or fifteen years, mm -hmm. and and don't show any sign of letting up, and it's it's very inclusive. You got a lot of species that he goes through, and if you're really interested in microgreens, uh, that is, I think that's a good place to start because Sal knows what he's doing. I love Sal's, Sal's business philosophy, which is don't get bigger until you can't get better. Oh. So I think that came from A lot from of <laughs> folks make that mistake. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. you try to, yeah. things are going good and you, you just mm -hmm. get overextended. Mm -hmm. and, and I think he got that either from his father or grandfather. But I tried idea. microgreens last year for the first time, grew them. Um, and really it was just because I wanted something to look at mm -hmm. in the wintertime. But I really enjoyed them. They were actually not bad. And I was like making trays <laughs> to give to people so that yeah. they could eat them as well. Like it was it was fun. It was like a little chia yeah. pet. Well, that makes I have, me want to run right out and get some. <laughs> haven't had, haven't had a chance bad. to read it all yet. But the, the, the thing that comes to my mind is where do you get quantities of seed enough to, to do whole flats mm -hmm. of, of these things. But uh, there must be a source or people would, yes. would be doing it. Uh, had other friends in, in Wisconsin who were doing this. 10 or 15 years ago and selling to restaurants around mm -hmm. Madison area. Um, and Very they just cool. had, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's fun. And, mm -hmm. and, and what's his name again? Just in case. Sal people... Gilberti. Sal Gilberti. He, if, okay. if you watch national TV, he's been on with Martha Stewart many times. They were in a similar area in Connecticut. And uh, he's also been on some of the morning shows out there out of New York. So wow. he's, <laughs> He's a stitch besides besides being very knowledgeable yeah. about what he does. <laughs> well, look him up. <clears throat> That's the second time Martha's been um, noted on this program. At the Great Pumpkin Patch in Arthur, she um, has the growers there either decorate or cook with her or that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, she's kind of got a... Yeah, they, they have, have been contracted to do like a tower of pumpkins oh, yes. and squash in yes. different places. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. was he on with Snoop Dogg? Now I, that I don't I, know. I think he was pre Snoop Dogg mainly. Oh, pre right. Snoop Dogg, Martha. Okay. Before before Martha grafted herself to, to <laughs> Snoop. I'm not. I'm not sure. <clears throat> All right, Marty, we've got a question for you, timely as well. Um, this is from Susan in Aurora. She says, after a light frost, I lifted the cannibal and elephant ears. Um, the canners were in my pond, spilling out of the pots. Should I divide them now before storing in the basement? I'm afraid if I if I don't, they'll rot being so close together. So she sent in some pictures um, mm -hmm. of a, let me get to the one where they're kind of clumped. There we go. So would you, this is the one I'm assuming that was in the pot, in the pond, right? I, I would imagine, yeah. What would you do with this? Uh, we were discussing this before the show, and I don't, I don't think I would divide them before spring because... Um, dieback can occur, and I know you're concerned about rot. Um, when I trim rot from a from bulbs like that that are going to overwinter, make sure you cut all of the rot out. You get down to the just the white flesh of the tuber, and if there's any brown at all, cut it out. Cut it back farther. Gouge it out. I mean, get it out also before you store these leave them in a in a warm ish airy location so they don't freeze but they get good and dry before you store them for the winter so that rot that's got to go so just keep cutting back until you get the flesh of this tuber is going to be uh, white like a like a parsnip you know mm -hmm. or something is so get rid yeah. of all that. Yeah, get all that brown on the on a cut end. You know, if it feels mushy, it's got to go. Now, what so. about all the extra root there? That will die back, or do you cut that off? It'll dry out. It'll dry out, but yeah. don't worry about that so much. Yeah, and then I'd I'd pack those in. Uh, I mean, they're really hardy. I've mm -hmm. I've overwintered cannas uh, for years. Uh, when when I was working, I don't grow them myself, but I grew them for other people. Karen's so. a big canna lady, and she uses um, pine shavings mm -hmm. a lot of time yep. in like a like a plastic grocery bag. 
Yeah. Um, and then she she said she usually goes down at like February ish and just kind of gives them a peek. Mm -hmm. And if any any other rot has you know yep. happened, she chucks those. Take and, a knife, yeah. Yeah. Take a good sharp knife, yeah. But they should they're they're really really resilient and obviously you've overwintered them before so I have every confidence in your ability. <laughs> I also have a couple of comments on on what the gentlemen were talking about earlier. Sure. The um, the four o'clocks. I had a client who loved these and she had a bed on the southeast corner of her house that I also built as flagstone. It's a little bit raised. We had a uh, <laughs> Uh, hydrangea standard in there. I think it was Pinky Winky. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Funny name. <laughs> Beautiful. <clears throat> and then uh, she loved four clocks. So we seated them in, in this little raised bed. And the bed was probably, oh, I don't know, twice as big as this table we're sitting at. So, you mm -hmm. know, not, not gigantic. It was in a corner. And the four clocks would stay open later than yours did because there were some massive trees oh. to the east and it kept it stayed pretty shady and cool and I don't know what makes four o'clocks close is it the day length the brightness of or the heat yeah okay <laughs> we're Thank going you with yes on that one. could be okay. any one of those things I'm, or a combination yeah, thereof I don't know either interesting <laughs> but uh, yeah. they reseeded I, I only planted those once and they reseeded themselves freely <laughs> and there was a huge difference of, of color, and then, you know, they'll produce seed, and they'll, you know, when the mommy four o'clock and the daddy four o'clock love each other very much, they have seeds, like, much like the holly that Jim was talking mm -hmm, about before. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, <laughs> then you get all sorts of hybrid <laughs> colors and things. So they are, indeed, really easy to grow, and they're really rewarding, too. They're very nice. Interesting. Okay. And also, when Jim was talking about the holly, I was thinking I've, I've planted lots of holly over the years, uh, different kinds. And you don't need to think to yourself, I don't want a male holly because it doesn't have any berries on it. Don't plant them in a row, children. Plant them in a clump. Okay? And one male holly depending on the proximity of the females, he can pollinate uh, five, six, seven other female plants. You just need him, and you put him a little bit in the background because he's utilitarian. He's not pretty. And then you put the girls in front of him, you know. <laughs> As and they should be. Exactly. You know. <coughs> okay. So I'm just saying. They should name one of those Lothario. They also should. They really should. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but, you know, you can plant plant a, a bank of them or a planting of them and, and you know, put Lothario in the back where, where he can not draw attention to himself and still get the job done, Get right? the job done. Yeah, okay. so I'm All just right. saying, this is a real sexy show this month, I don't know. Jim, so, I bet we better get to you before okay. things get out of hand. I don't know, you so were now talking about pollination. We've talked, we saw it. your pictures, and now we're going to talk about live specimens. Well, this is, uh, you know, during the winter season, thinking about how you're going to decorate the house uh, outside as well as inside, you can grow taxes very easily in the Midwest. It does very, and there's all kinds of varieties. You know the varieties. There are lots of Huge. different ones. I have the spreading mm, ones. Me too. And Everlows. You, right, and they're really nice. I mean, you can use these in decorations. Mm -hmm. And so I would say grow your own hollies. Grow your own taxes so you have plenty of greens for the holiday season. So taxes is easily grow. Now in taxes, like collies, you have male taxes plants as well as female taxes. It doesn't make any difference in the, in, in the taxes because, you know, the berries on the uh, female taxes are really small and, and they're not soft. noticeable. Yeah, right. so, the birds eat them. Right, so you don't want to, but, but I have to warn you, uh, taxes is ta toxic to animals. So it's fine to use these decorations like, I mean, taxes on the outside, mm -hmm. but inside, if you have cats or dogs, they might nibble on some of that. So you got to be careful. I would not use taxes as a decoration indoors, indoors. Mm -hmm. if you have pets. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but it's a nice plant to use. Now there's a whole bunch of other evergreens that I, I raise. Some of them are here like the uh, 
This is the uh, Norway spruce. So pretty. And you know, it's nice. As a kid, I grew up on a small farm and I raised Norway spruce. The problem is they drop their needles if you take them indoors quickly. So it's a fast growing evergreen, probably not suitable unless you have the space. Uh, another nice evergreen is a hemlock. Okay. They're very slow growing, but they, uh, they're they used as a sometimes as a Christmas tree, but mm -hmm. you know more for ornamental purposes, but it's really a nice, beautiful, lacy looking plant that mm -hmm. uh, does quite well in the Midwest, but they're slow growing. That is really pretty. You talked about using little sprigs of that in uh, wrapping packages. Yeah, or, because you know. these these little mm -hmm. tiny cones are really are quite quite interesting. I mean, they're, they're tiny little cones, so they really make a nice uh, a nice addition to your outside. Those There's tiny some... little cones are great for doing arrangements. I mean, even like uh, on on something you're decorate that you're making as a as a decorative accent indoors because they're cones. Mm -hmm. They're not going to dry up and drop. You can clip those off and hot glue them wherever yeah. you want them to stick, and they're just, they're adorable. They're so tiny. <laughs> they're very cute. Some of the other uh, evergreens that I grow, uh, this is called a canna fir, C-A-A-N fir. It looks a lot like the balsam. In fact, they one time thought it was the same species, but it is different. But canna fir is really nice. It's a little bit uh, better plant than the balsam. As a kid, I raised balsam fir in Ohio, but uh, it did not even do too well in Ohio. But uh, here in the Midwest, uh, the canna fir does m much better. So it's a nice plant you can use for uh, you know ornamentation. The other very nice evergreen is concolor fir. Now these get to be big trees, mm -hmm. but it's a very nice uh, plant and it does extremely well in the uh, Midwest. One that I think I would avoid is the uh, we love a cautionary tale. Or is, <laughs> is a white pine. They make nice Christmas trees. I grew. I have some on my property that are probably about seventy-five feet in height. Mm -hmm. So they're big trees. You don't want to plant a, a white pine when you got a small yard. They just mm -hmm. take up too much space. They, do. they make nice Christmas trees. You got if you share them. But uh, there's a lot of drawbacks with the white pine. First of all, the branches are very brittle. Several years ago, we had a severe ice storm in the Midwest, and it just, I mean, I, I heard all night long crashing, 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 because the branches were in, and big limbs were falling. So you gotta be careful if you have any white pine. You don't wanna plant white pine near any kind of building of any kind. I had one that was near my home, that had, it was probably it was about 65 or 70 feet in height. I had it taken down, because I couldn't afford to have the of a great big limb pole in the house. So yes. Yeah. You gotta watch with the white pine. I mean, they're nice trees, but in certain areas. Okay. They also have a tendency to produce a lot of sap, particularly on the cones. And so you don't wanna put your picnic bench underneath a white pine, because you have all the, the sticky stuff all over the place. So there's some disadvantages of the white pine. Okay, thank you so much, Jim. And we are going to throw it back over to Liz, and then we will join you right here in just a few minutes. And thank you, Tanisha. So delighted to be here in the Mid-American Gardener Studios tonight. Kind of getting in the holiday spirit with that segment with all of the different evergreen spruces. Hollies, I believe. Don't uh, quote me on that. Either way, it is the season of giving, if you can believe it or not. Uh, it's the end of the year fundraising for us as well. So we hope that when you're in that giving spirit, you include Illinois Public Media in your giving plans. 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. And there are many ways in which you can give if you're already uh, a member, perhaps you want to become a sustaining member, you figure out what's good for your monthly budget, and you know that you can set it, forget it, but each and every time you tune in, you're supporting what you love about Illinois Public Media and public media here locally. Or perhaps if you are a sustaining member, you can up that to $10, 12 $15 a month. It's whatever works in your budget, and we do hope that we will be a part of your giving season in support of Mid-American Gardener and the many ways it connects you to your community at willgive.org. But let's get to that demo space and see what they're up to. Thanks, Liz. And Marty is joining us because the last time when I was the teacher, I got some things wrong. So we brought in the muscle, right, Steve? Exactly. I asked if you were going to get graded on being a teacher. You it's weren't, like... but I think you were. 
It's more I was judging because really. as soon as I got back <laughs> over there, they let me know that I was not, in fact, putting Holly no. into the pot. Not at all. So, Marty, just help us. Okay. All right. So Let's what see. is it you're putting in there now? This is con color fur. It's kind of a bluish fur. And when you have a lot of evergreens like we fortunately do, thanks to Jim, let me back up. you put these in first. So kind of break off those bottom ones so they'll have a nice stick that goes in there. And don't worry about them hanging over the edge of the pot. That's kind of pretty. See, this is why so, we keep you around. That's, that's my only To clean function, up my mess. Really, it's, that's what I do. <laughs> to clean up after me. Yeah. And this is great because it's, like it's the mafia just, kind of. Well, I mean, okay. uh, it's great. It's the, it's the <laughs> Mid-American Garter Mafia. We'll put it there. Uh, yeah. We'll make t-shirts. Awesome. Uh, but this is great because it's you're showing us that. My name ends even, in a vowel, you know. Hey, it's so, even better. Okay. Uh, taking off these, these end stems really helps solidify it in the, in the yes. dirt. Yes, yes. And they sit, they sit in there a lot better. See, hers and then is when already you, looking way more beautiful you, and lush than mine. When you tear those stems off, then you have another stem. You have more to play with. <laughs> to use in the pot, yeah. So Very nice. So Always you learning. Do these Always and, learning here. Well, it's like flower arranging. You do the uh, you do the base part first, and then you put the pretties in last. Okay. So, Steve, next year? Uh, we'll, we'll nail it next year. And speaking <laughs> of next year, you've been on the go a lot this year. Yes, and So have. where have you been so far? So we went to the Pumpkin Patch, which was absolutely amazing. That show, uh, we, we aired that a few weeks ago. That was really cool. Um, we're going to be doing some wreath making a little bit later on this year. Oh, nice. So Fun. yeah, we are really trying to get out of the studio and more into the spaces that we're talking about. Um, you know, we always do plant swaps with the CU plant people. Um, just fun ways to get out and connect. We've been at the farmer's market before. So just look for more of that in, in 24. We want to be out and about and answering your garden questions. We've actually had people come up at farmer's markets um, and, and bring sick plants and, and ask <laughs> folks like Marty to tell them what's going on that's if great. there's a scale issue. So it's yeah. dying, buy another one. Yeah, <laughs> that's usually what her advice is. <laughs> and the only reason that we're able to do that is because of the gifts from friends like you. It's 217-244-9455, online at willgive.org. Continue to support WILL and Mid-American Gardener. Helps us get out into the community more, gets us into into where we need to be, into the places that you are, so you can bring up your, your dead plants and, and Mark yes. can just tell you that they're dead. Yeah, because what that's insects? what I do. Um, also, these sprays come on wires, mm -hmm. so open them up. Look Very at nice. that. Smooch it's like there. you've done this a time or two. A couple, a couple times. I've I've done weddings. And these are pretty inexpensive um, to make. Like I was saying oh, the first yeah. time, yeah. I already had this pot and I had my yeah. kids do a little art project. Jim brought these in for the show, so on yeah. the house. And then great. I got these guys at the store where everything used to be a dollar. I'm still bitter about it. <laughs> still bitter about it. So you can, this is you know, less resentment. than 10 bucks, less than 10 bucks. And yeah. you've got a porch pot. Totally and it's can. a great gift. It's, it's something totally that you could can. do with your family around the holidays. It's, it's a great, mm -hmm. maybe uh, something you can do on a Saturday afternoon when there's nothing else going on. Maybe there's some college bowl games and you have nothing else better to do than to make a, a planter pot like this. And yeah. it's, it's a great time. If your team is losing, not which doing they well. Probably just, are. <laughs> you're mad about <laughs> that too. You're mad about that too. Just make a porch pot. Here's you know. what to do. You can take your anger out on the dirt instead of uh, there you on, go. instead of the team, right. which is great. Oh, Marty, you really outdid yourself. This is much better than what we did. I'm sorry. No, like, hey, <laughs> no apology this necessary. This is awesome. This is a. Uh, she's done okay. this a time or two on her. These guys and it's here. natural plants. Are now we have a gift here about native plants. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for ten dollars a month or one-time gift of one hundred twenty dollars. Are any of these native? To, to Illinois? Um, any of the... Well, uh, let's see. Oh. I'm not... Oh, gosh, we have What about the evergreens? Feet. Are any of the ever, evergreens native? I'm pretty sure the white pines live here. I mean, I... Didn't you listen when Jim was talking about these? Because that would have no. been useful. Were any of you Steve? listening? Any of, there's going to be a <laughs> We already flunked our first I'm round of porch pot Poinsettia building. are not native here. Okay. They come from much farther south, and in uh, look at that. In south, oh, like Mexico or um, the uh, uh, the Virgin Islands, okay. mm -hmm. places like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I saw a poinsettia that was as large as a tree. You oh, could wow. put a 
bench under it and oh, wow. sit under it. It was the coolest. It was really, really nice. Well, if you're like me and don't know what native plants are in Illinois, you can give a gift at $10 a month, a one-time gift of $120, and learn about all the native plants in Illinois and the surrounding Midwest. I'm out of stuff. And you can continue to support WILL and Mid-American Gardener at 217-244-9455, online at willgive.org. And this is amazing and better than what we did before. And that's okay, because we're not experts, but Marty right. is. It's 217-244-9455, online at willgive.org. Become a friend of WILL today. We'll go back to uh, learn about the PBS app here in just a little bit. 217-244-9455. I set off alone to a place far away from everything I'd ever known. Welcome. Ciao. Ciao. Um, thank you for the invitation. Everyone wants this to be textbook, but it's not. I really think we should be friends. And that was a little bit more about the PBS app, which is a great resource. It's a place that you can go and watch past Mid-American Gardener episodes, catch up on the latest ones. We also offer that on YouTube. And of course, Mid-American Gardener has its own social media channels. The show has grown and evolved so much in its 30 plus years, and it always strives to meet you where you are, right? So as Tanisha was talking about, the show is going to be out and about even more uh, and we love to see it. We're so proud of what Tanisha has done with Mid American Gardener and bringing you the gardening advice that you need, where you need it, when you need it, how you need it. And your support goes towards all of Tanisha's efforts, this team's efforts, and Illinois Public Media's efforts as a whole. And so we'd love to hear from you, especially if Mid American Gardener is your top show. It's the thing you never miss, whether it's on the app or live on WILL TV. 217-244-9455. You can give online at willgive.org. In that comment section, or where you're talking to someone on the phone, tell us what's motivating you to give in your season of giving. Thank you. All right, thanks, Liz. And we've got a couple more things that Chuck brought in to share, um, also timely. Right, it's, we're right at the end of garlic planting season. Mm -hmm. And if, if you haven't heard me say it before, Garlic is a fall bulb, like yeah. tulips and daffodils. Mm -hmm. You want to get them in from about the middle of October. You can probably get it to the middle of, of November, but that, you know, you're starting to push it. Uh, I just happened to get this one back. It's a variety called Music. And for years in my trial, I had like 40 uh, garlics. This was always the most productive. Oh, okay. Uh, it has huge cloves, as you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a bulb like this might only have four or five, or a, a big one may only have six. Um, but it, it's super productive. Uh, it's a hard neck, and those generally have more complex flavor and more go gourmet types. Um, you break it up into the indiv individuals, plant it about three inches deep, three or four inches apart, and uh, harvest it next July when it still has a couple of green leaves on it because mm -hmm. the, the leaves are attached to these papery wrappings. And once the leaf dies, these start to d deteriorate. So if you wait till they're all brown here in the humid Midwest. Good to know. You'll have bare cloves and those don't, those don't, uh, don't uh, keep nearly as well. And then I was also out um, in the leek patch and, and dug this one up for you. Um, are leeks cool season? I don't know much about them. Well, they're kind of all season. All season, okay. Um, <clears throat> but you, they'll, they'll take a, a good amount of, of chill. So um, I just buy them in a cell pack lately, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't seem to singulate them. So there's usually two, three, four in a in a cell. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year I tried to pull them apart a little bit, so I didn't get, you know. I've had, had them about as thick as, as my wrist. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But, uh, but this is pretty nice. And, and separate and you them? Eat you separate them? them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. And, yeah. And, or depending on what I'm feeling at the time. Yeah. Sometimes I'll have three or four in a spot and just have baby leaks. You know? Yeah. Um, and most people just use the, the white part, but uh, oh. the, green, the greens are, are also very useful. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little tough, you know, but certainly if you're making a vegetable stock or mm -hmm. something, the, the greens are good. Usually you see them cut like this. That's mainly to keep them from transpiring too much and, get, and getting, getting uh, wilted. But uh, I, I like leeks 
to some degree where raw onions kind of turn me off because they have that nasty sulfurous thing. Leeks are, are much, much kinder, gentler sort of a flavor. Um, <laughs> There's something else that you prefer over onion. There's shallots. Shallots, yes. Yes, you have mm -hmm. the refined palette. It, well, that, that's true. <laughs> and, 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 and with those, you know, if, if you say um, a shallot is, is just a small onion, then you don't deserve to have shallots because, <laughs> because it's, they're not that much the same. Gotcha. <clears throat> gotcha. Slice of about that. Okay. And, well, you, and okay. you should only have onions. In gotcha. spite of that, he brought, he brought this in here. Yes, it were, originally was inside the Inside the acre, but he was not fooling us because we're <laughs> professionals, okay? She knew Just from saying, a mile away that there, oh, was, God dang. there was yeah. no, there were no eggs in because there. Because eggs well, don't have stems. You know, since, since I have six or eight of these, I was trying to think of something wonderful that, <laughs> that, that I could put in there, 12 of, to, yes. to, to give as Christmas gifts or something, <laughs> just to pass along this, this, this smile that Sal sent me. The, the 12 <clears> garlics <throat> of Christmas, and you can stick well, their little heads out. There you yeah, go. You could do that. The 12 like, garlics of Christmas. With some holly. Very nice. We've got about a minute <laughs> left. Um, I want to thank you guys this, for, for coming in today and for bringing all of the wonderful things that you brought with you. I really appreciate your time and talents. And now we're going to go back to Liz one more time so she can tell you about how to become a friend to our show. Thank you so much, Tanisha. I continue to learn from the show. Still don't have any green thumbs, uh, but anytime that I tune in, there is something that I walk away going, I didn't know that, and now I do. Whether I'm actually able to make anything happen in the garden or stay alive, doesn't matter. Point is, public media is all about lifelong learning, learning excuse me, and enriching your lives, meeting you at your passions, entertaining you along the way. We have a breadth of options, programs, services, projects, ways that we are connecting you in your community and right here in your living room. So you support all of it. But if Mid-American Gardener is your favorite, it's really important to give during this program tonight. 217-244-9455, online at willgive.org. Tell us why you love Tanisha and what you would like to see in 2024 because as we wrap up this uh, year and this is our end of year giving, we are planning for a really powerful year next year and you are such an important part of that. So again, willgive.org or 217-244-9455. But let's check in with that demo space, Stephen, Tanisha, it's all you. All right, thanks so much, Liz. Yeah, and thanks for uh, everything we've done here today. We've made this planter, well, we tried to make a planter and then Marty showed us how to actually make the planter, which <laughs> is amazing. Uh, I can't believe how different it looks with yeah. all the same things. and. It's crazy that everything that you guys do here, you may look so easy, all the experts that come on. I didn't know garlic was so easy to grow. I'm gonna try and probably fail, but that's okay. The first thing, the best thing is you gotta try. And uh, that's true. everything they do here, you can really try. And, and I'm telling you, I, every week I'm learning like crazy amounts of information. The leeks, the garlic, the, I, I called these holly last time, but evergreens. I mean, you just, every when you're in proximity to these panelists. Right, you just learn by osmosis just, Yeah, exactly, exactly. But and I love that she took our entire pot apart, yeah, took it apart. and we'll reassembled it. it, and it looks 10 times better. <laughs> I will say, she did mention that there is holly in this. Yes. It's just not real. So yes. it's the gold things or holly. Obviously, holly isn't gold in real life, yes. at least that I know of. We learned that today, uh, too. And then there's some other ones here, but they have acorns in them, and holly <laughs> doesn't have acorns. So... <laughs> Neither we tried. fake points though. Yeah, we tried. We tried. But you know what? She made a beautiful, beautiful porch pot here, and this is going to look lovely on the porch. And the most important thing is to try. Yeah, you that's right. Stuff. And you can make these as gifts, and we've got some gifts as well. Yes, we do. We have a coffee mug or water mug if you really enjoy Mid American Gardener with its logo and where you can find it in the hashtag Green Thumb Club. I didn't know that was a hashtag. And you can't go wrong with this Learn mug something because every day. obviously it's the little terracotta pot yeah. that we all love. Um, at my house, this is a perfect size cup for my eight-year-old, so I never get to use it, but it's it's perfect. It's a great mug. It I is. really need to get it one. Is. And then also the native plant book. I myself know nothing about native plants, so this is a great way to learn uh, and get everything you need to know about all the Midwest native plants. 225 plants. That's a lot of plants. It is. It and is. I know uh, native plants are big now, mm -hmm. replacing your lawns with native plants because it's healthier, supposedly. Yes. Um, you are. Gr it's a great opportunity to learn about what you can actually grow here pretty easily. And if I may, if you get this book, you've got all winter to sort of create your plan of attack, right, with the native plant. So get this book, 
and then plan all winter and you'll be ready to go in the spring. And it's a great opportunity and show to listen and learn about how to grow these native plants. It's 217-244-9455 online at willgive.org. You'll see now uh, opportunities to get these uh, gifts at right now. With your ongoing monthly gift of $7 or one-time gift of $84, we'll say thank you by sending you our special Mid-American Gardener mug, perfect for drinking coffee in the morning while you plan your day gardening. With your ongoing monthly gift of $10 or one-time gift of $120, you can select the Midwest Native Plant Primer, 225 plants for an earth-friendly garden by Alan Branhagen. This source book includes 225 recommended native ferns, grasses, wildflowers, perennials, vines, shrubs, and trees. It's everything you need to know to create a beautiful and beneficial Midwest garden. With your ongoing monthly gift of $15 or one-time gift of $180, you can select the mug and the Midwest plant primer, the perfect combination to help jumpstart you and your garden this spring. Such wonderful thank you gifts for the gardeners in your life. Perhaps you're going to treat yourself this holiday season, or that's going to help check off some holiday shopping on your list. Whatever the case may be, we do hope that you'll step up with an additional gift, a brand new gift. If you're a new friend of WILL, now is a wonderful time to join and become a friend, become a sustainer. Whatever level of giving is comfortable for you, we would, of course, love to have you. If you've been a longtime friend, maybe you want to give a gift of membership. Perhaps you want to up your annual giving or become a sustaining member or up your sustaining membership. There are so many ways that you can support Mid-American Gardener, a 30 plus year legacy of DIY lifelong learning right here on WILL. 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. I don't know about you, but I've been delighted to watch Tanisha and Steve in the demo space. We're going to check in with them one more time to see how they're doing, but it's been such a fun program. Thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for your support as we wrap up another powerful year at Illinois Public Media. Thanks so much, Liz. And that is the show. That's all the time we've got. Thank you so much for watching and we appreciate our panelists for coming in and building this beautiful porch pot. And Steve, thank you for stopping in and hanging out with us. And this is the last fun drive of the year, right? Yes, it is. It is the end of the year fun drive. So it's the best time to become a friend of WILL if you haven't already. If you are a friend of WILL, it's a great opportunity to enhance your gift. Uh, you can do so in many different ways. EFT, payroll deduction, uh, credit, debit, check, cash, Carrier pigeon. Carrier pigeon. All the uh, ways. All the ways to become a friend of WILL. <laughs> One of the ways is to also give us a call at 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. And I really appreciate you letting me come on the show. I always learn something new. Yes. This time I got to make this really cool thing and then get told we did it wrong and then get made even better. Yes. Uh, which is okay because you've got to learn. It works, right? I mean, they're they're the professionals. We're here to learn and that's, that's how it is. And this can make a really great gift. Um, and we have some other gifting options as well, right? Yes. You can uh, get the coffee mug, the Mid-American Gardener coffee mug that has uh, the hashtag Green Thumb Club on it and the Mid-American Gardener logo, and also learn about native plants in the Midwest. 225 of them, uh, great times to be a friend of WILL. $7 a month or one-time gift of $84 for the mug, $10 a month, one-time gift of $120 for the book, and the combo is $15 a month or one-time gift of $180. Become a friend of WILL today. It's 217-244-9455 online at willgive.org. We made this planter pot, and you're also making some other things later on. Yes. So to finish out the year, we're going to be doing some wreath making in the next few weeks, and we'll have that on before the holiday season. So if you feel so inclined and inspired to, to make that craft, um, we'll have that out in plenty of time. So, yeah, we're just trying to think outside the box, think of new ways to get out of the studio, but also keeping folks kind of green and learning and growing. So, yes. It's a great time that. to be a friend of WILL and Mid American Gardener. Again, thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for coming in, Steve. We really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll get this and get some of those native plants in your yard. For, I'm going to try, next I think. I, I know we want to plant a garden in the backyard, some vegetable garden stuff. So maybe native plants will surround it or there something. I don't know. We'll think of something. All right. And thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions for our panelists, you can send those in to yourgarden at gmail.com. Or you can search for us on Facebook and Instagram. Just look for Mid-American Gardener. And again, thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Good night.